World Championships 2017 here in Tokyo. We are now at the top eight of the All Ages bracket, Jerome, and we have got a cracking match for these guys to see next. So there is one person, exactly one person, who did not play dinosaurs or three Dracos, but he did make the top eight, and we've got him here for you in this match. Michael Forner playing Wind Witches uh, invoked, mm -hmm. and he's going up against True Draco from uh, Naoki Takeda of Japan. And it's a uh, fairly standard looking True Draco deck. He's got the three Dynamites, uh, not really going on Ignis here, and the standard, you know, Carded My stuff. What makes this deck interesting is that he's packing cards like Gozen Match. Oh, that's super tricksy. It's um, really good against Dinosaur specifically because all of those things are of different attributes. So you won't be able to keep them all on the field at the same time if you manage to flip Gozen Match. But the other thing is, even if he has to flip it afterwards, you have to send everything to the graveyard until you only control one type. Uh, slightly less effective against the Wind Witch deck that's primarily the wind attribute. I'm yep. uh, going to be making the crystal wing that your opponent can interact with. Mm -hmm. As I, I mean, this is one of the biggest problems that the uh, True Jaco Demise deck actually had at the WCQs against uh, Wind Witches with the turn one Crystal Wing. That right. Could just shut them down immediately. Um, so I guess the Dice Roll is going to play a good part in, uh, in deciding this match. If well, whether or not Michael can win the first turn and then make the uh, Crystal Wing, right? Yeah, that's that's really the big thing here is getting that Crystal Wing down there. But don't leave the uh, don't leave the Invoke monsters out too much. They are pretty good. Like the wind one, Invoked Rasion, for example, as the quick effect Book of Moon. That's a very useful card, especially with its 2200 attack points able to get past the defense of some of these monsters. Yeah, true. I mean, it's very strong, and the best part about it is in order to fit the uh, the whole Invoked part of it, it's mostly extra deck space because your main deck monsters is just the free Alistairs, and then you've just got a few extra cards that you want to uh, include on your spells, which is going to be Magical Meltdown, some wonder ones for good measure mm -hmm. if you if you want to and invocations and uh, you know it's a pretty slim line that you can put into the main deck uh, if you've got the space in your extra deck to take advantage of it he's got some pretty good stuff lined up specifically against the true draco deck though as we can see he's running the zombie world that did uh, charlie fudge a lot of good in his match against true dracos that we saw earlier in the day but foreigner is running the entire set rotation package with it so he's got his Magical Meltdown, he's got his Zombie World, he's also got Closed Forest. I can't even remember what Closed Forest actually does, yeah, we right? Can, we can take a look at Closed Forest Is it while like everybody's getting ready. Is it like gain 100 attack points for each beast in the graveyard? Um, stops field spells being played? Uh, it can't activate new ones. The turn it's removed from the field. So even if your opponent gets rid of it, then they're, right. still, stu they they're still stuck for the turn. one for the turn. I always forget exactly what it counts because the last time I played with Closed Forest was when we had it in Battle Pack 3, <laughs> that was a which while used back. the special rule that made all monsters all types, so all the cards, and it worked. I mean, that's uh, that's one of my favorite things about uh, set rotation is we've seen a lot of these uh, really old-school field spells that never really did anything competitive play suddenly becoming super relevant when you can give your opponent cards they can't do and then lock them out of a precious zone on the map. Oh, yeah. oh it does say field spell cards cannot be activated. Yeah, field spell cards cannot be activated. Field spell cards cannot be activated during the turn this card is destroyed. That's uh, super disruptive against the uh, True Draco deck trying to get that uh, diagram off as quickly as possible. Yep, I, I don't think this is a card that he's sitting there to give to his opponent. I think he's giving it to himself and then stopping his just stopping his opponent from activating whatever he handed them. Right, yeah, in just case, yeah, you can't play anymore. Yeah, I think that's what, they, what he's going to go for here. All right, so we're getting some extra instructions here primarily of basically what to do on a live stream, making sure that you're not showing your cards to the world. And by the world, I mean your opponent. <laughs> it's, okay <laughs> if you, it's okay if you show them to us. We would love to know what you have in your hand so we can think about it a little more. But, uh, yeah, that's the uh, last thing. is uh, You don't want to be giving your opponent any more advantages uh, at this stage because they are playing, actually, for the prize cards this round. Oh, yes. Uh, so the top four will walk away with the um, most precious cards in Yu-Gi-Oh, essentially, that we release every year. Mm -hmm. The... Um, we don't actually have those to show for you yet, but no, we'll see if we can get them for you we'll tomorrow. We'll get them tomorrow. But they look gorgeous. Um, I did manage to... We, we did see them when we were preparing for this event, and mm -hmm. uh, I think you guys are going to really like them. I think we actually published uh, the artwork somewhere, but I can't remember. You know, it's kind of a shame that we don't have the mats for them right now, because uh, all these players are getting game mats as well, are they not? Yes, I believe so. Uh, there's... I think each player gets both game mats. It's both game mats. Ooh, very nice. I wasn't sure if it was just the top eight got one and everyone got the entry one, or if it's everyone gets two. But uh, I'm pretty sure it's everyone gets two. Mm. Well, 
the, uh, I know which one I like. It's, uh, it's very metal. <laughs> oh, yes, the, uh, the Iron Knight. He's super amazing. Uh, you might be able to hear from behind me uh, coming through. The uh, head judge is giving the final instruction to the players uh, and explaining that since we're going into single elimination, uh, there's not gonna, uh, the additional turns and end of match procedure changes slightly for the players. And I believe they also mentioned that the final shuffle was being handled differently. It's handled yeah, by a judge. That's right. They're just. Um, they're looking. We had this a little bit last year, where the, uh, so much time was spent on shuffling. They wanted to just have a final shuffle done by judges uh, to speed up the process a little bit. After all the searching. Ready, three, two, one, duel. Okay, here we go, guys. Let's roll. Top eight. And here comes the dice roll. High roll. Do you ever roll a one and then just go uh, low roll and see if your opponent <laughs> just buys it? Uh, <laughs> no, I'm not nearly that shady. <laughs> I may forget from time to time which zones my link monsters point to, but uh, that's easy to fix. You just put it in the right spot instead of the wrong spot. I was when I was playing uh, in the office when we had the very early versions of the link monsters, and I was trying to summon uh, Honeybot without using Cyberus monsters, and Franklin was like. Are, are you are you trying to cheat me? Uh, <laughs> like that, that's actually a really common thing because you know, Link Spider, okay, it's one normal monster. Deco Talker, effect monsters. But, oh, and it looks like Michael Forner has started off with Wind Witch Ice Bell. That's pretty good. That's going to get him all the way up to uh, the Crystal Wing, right? Yep, the uh, Indestructible by Opponent's Card Effects Crystal Wing, which you can generally just ride to victory in this particular matchup. There's not a whole lot that they can do about it. But even Masterpiece doesn't get there. I mean, the way that you can beat it is you generally have to have the field spell out to get the extra 300 attack points on your masterpiece and then you have to attack into the crystal wing solemn strike the crystal wing you can't yeah, destroy it yeah. to negate its attack uh, boost so you can run over it for 250 damage but with only one dragonic diagram available that's incredibly unlikely it feels uh feels a little unlikely and uh also foreigners are going to get some burn damage in here as well ice spell does 500 damage whenever she's normal or special summoned uh, the tiny pokes of damage, something that your players can look forward to with our Trick Stars uh, that were just re released in Code of the Duelist. Wind Witches are actually a pretty good match with them. Those extra burn damage points that you get out of Ice Bell and then from the Synchro Monster, Winter Bell, those can really add up. And if you, say, have two copies of them, or uh, two copies of Winter Bell in your extra deck and maybe a Revival Trick or two, that can really add up. So you get 500 from Ice Bell, you'll get another 800 from uh, Winter Bell. I believe. Is he playing Winter Bell or it's just Ice uh, Bell, Snow Bell, Glass Bell? No, the Synchro. Oh, the Synchro Monster. My, my apologies. Uh, Has he got Winter? He's got, yes, Winter Bell. Yeah, Clear Wing and Winter Bell. So he goes with Winter Bell here and then targets the Glass Bell in his graveyard. So he's going to inflict damage equal to 200 times the level of that monster. So 800 total. And those 200s mix very nicely with Trickstar. It keeps the math simple for you. Everything's just 200 times something. And he climbs all the way up to Crystal Wing Synchro Dragon. If you're only going to have one extra deck monster, having an indestructible Crystal Wing is usually a very good one. It's pretty good. If you use Snowbell for a Wind Synchro monster, it becomes immune to being destroyed by your opponent's card effects. Seems fair. It's fine. You have to use Wind Monsters. It's fair like Terror Top, right? <laughs> good old Terror Top. Uh, how many how many guys are missing that, really? Fairer Top is what we need. Fairer Top. Fairer Top. It's at the next Arata right there. Mm -hmm. Not really, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to see Alistair coming down, uh, which is going to allow Michael to search his deck for Invocation. Uh, he's not going to be able to use that right now. Well, he could, but he'd be giving up his Synchro Monster, so on, why would he do that? But he's going to be able to set himself up for later turns. No, he's not interested in Fusion Summoning right now, but I bet he would be interested in throwing down a Wonder Wand. Yes, uh, if he has it, then drawing additional cards. But I don't think he does based on the fact that he's already set his spell a trap. Yeah, pass. I think it was Solemn Warning that was set. Well, even if he doesn't have Wonder Wand, just having that Alistair on the field is another thousand points of damage. Like right now, he's got half of his opponent's life points right there. Yeah. It's a two turns, two turn clock essentially for his opponent. Tributes goes in match for Dynamite Knight. And Solemn Warning. Beats Solemn, goes to 6,000. And we'll see if Nick Naoki Takeda's hand is good enough to play through this. 
That's going to be so hard, though. The Crystal Wing is the additional negation as well. It's yeah. going to be able to shut down another additional monster effect. It's really hard. He's got only spells and traps here. But I think one is Card of Demise, I think I saw. Yeah, uh, Takeda does have the Card of Demise, which is one of my favorite cards, actually. I really like Card of Demise. I know a lot of players have this love-hate relationship with it, but it it lets a lot of decks that sh probably shouldn't be in a format actually exist, like this uh, particular version of the um, True Raker deck. I think it's just a really cool card in general. It's one of my... Um, it's one of those things that they only use once or twice on the TV show, but you remember it each time it's played because it it's just so ludicrous. <laughs> too, too ludicrous to print, as is. We've had a couple of cards like that. Uh, uh, we got a good... Like, uh, what was the card in Legendary Collection? That we had to write, you can't play it in a duel. Oh, that card wasn't that bad. Uh, what, when a monster's time becomes zero, draw five cards. I think you could play that. That'd be fine. No one would play that. Uh. Well, okay, maybe they would now that you can detach something from a Zodiac and your monster becomes... Zero. <laughs> I draw five cards. But uh, you know, it's not like they didn't do that anyways. Come on, man. Uh, well, that's fair. It's <laughs> <laughs> they don't need a trap card to do that. Uh, you know what? I can't, I can't really argue that. The <laughs> card economy was certainly not that deck's weak point. <laughs> All right. He's going to go ahead and uh, uh, try to draw. But the Ghost Ogre comes down from Michael. Michael in a very strong position. But... Uh, Takeda really um, giving himself as many options as possible here. Um, considering Michael's already put in quite a bit of work with nega various negations, uh, he's still going. Yeah, he's drawn an extra five cards just in the past minute. Almost had a six, but Ghost Ogre and Snow Rabbit destroyed that spell. And you do that because if the card your opponent draws happens to be a really good monster. You don't want them to have the material to tribute for it, or rather the uh, additional tribute summon. And Card of the Mize is going to make uh, Takeda uh, throw out that last card. And it was another monster, Dynamite Knight. Which he would have been able to play. Uh, most likely face down on uh, Takeda's uh, side of the field is probably True King's Return, right? You can probably expect that uh, after he's gone through so many cards. Return or Apocalypse, it's very likely. Uh, what he really wants, though, is a strike, because he wants to bait out and do what you said there and bait out that. Ah, it kind uh, of goes much. Okay, well, Alistair's getting sent to the graveyard. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Alistair's gone. <laughs> There's absolutely no way he's giving up that crystal wing. And instead, he's going to attack for 3,000. Drops to 3,700. And now Forner's going to want to see more Wind Witches. If he can get them. Just start getting in as much damage as you can. Another five from Ice Bell here. That'd be nice. Yeah, it's going to... Michael's just looking for any wind monster to uh, try and close out the game. But you know, when you stand around, stand, no, Ring of Destruction. He's just going to burn it. Uh, he doesn't do anything. Yeah, he's just clear, clearing up space, right? He's got to be. Okay, it's gone. Because you can only use it on your opponent's turn. Ah, That's okay. Yeah, that so was the, one of the changes to the text. Yeah. So otherwise, he would have drawn, saw his card to decide whether or not he needs to get rid of it. But right. since it changed, he can't do that. Ring of Destruction. We don't see that very often. It's been cropping up a lot more. It's gotten uh, popular. Well, Trick Star is what really brought it back onto the, the scene as a spot removal card you can use at any time on your opponent's turn. That also gets some damage in. It's a very strong card. It's like, even still, by today's standard, I think Marine Destruction is very good, but it just, it never saw play because there's just better options hmm. for you. And he's picked up his third Dynamite Knight, so he's only got seven monsters in his deck, and he's drawn all three copies of Dynamite Knight. And then some probably banished under the Pot of Desire, so he must, uh, Takeda must be running very low on monsters in his, in his arsenal. He has a grand total of four other monsters, and two are Maxi and Ghost Ogre. If the he's other two are Masterpiece and Maiden. If he's banished... Well, I, I think I saw one of the Maidens under the uh, Pot of Desires. If he's banished the Masterpiece, has he got any way left of winning? Mm, no. Okay, so if he's lost a Masterpiece, uh, that's essentially it for him. Yeah, and the thing is here, that's a level 5 or higher monster, so he's getting that full 3,000 damage through anyways. It doesn't even slow him down. No.
So a quick check there. I'm not quite sure what they were looking at. But now it goes ahead and attacks Dynamite Knight, and its effect will activate in the damage step, so that uh, Dynamite Knight can't respond to it. We'll see if Takeda has a trap, though. If he wants to try to... We have to start having the attack of it. Yeah, it's sort of trying to slow it down that way, but Apocalypse would be the other way I suppose he gets rid of it. But we do know Michael uh, has the invocation as well uh, to to follow this up. Takeda doesn't have it, or chooses not to use it, and he's down to 700. I think if he had it, he would have would have used it, because he would have just taken the 3,000 anyway. Well, he would have reduced the damage he would have taken, actually. All right, that's it for Forner. Oh, Kate Carter Demise. Carter Demise. Off the top. Oh, oh wow. <laughs> but it gets taken out by Ash Blossom. Yeah, you can tell the satisfaction from Michael right there. And when you hit the Carter Demise, it would have pulled up free. And he's like, here's my fair card. And he's like, here's my fair card. So Takeda is about all he can really do here is hope to block. He's got to block with True King's Return, and Ice Bell was kind of the perfect card here because it'll do another 500 damage, get it down to 200, and uh, even if he had Return, Crystal Wing would be able to take out the Return monster, and then Ice Bell would have been able to finish him off. And that's it's important that it was her because it was a win mod. Actually, no, was Goza Match tributed? Oh, uh, yeah, he tributed to Goza Match. Okay, so those are gone. Ice Bell, still great to have. Wow, Michael uh, very commandingly taking that first duel down and taking him one step closer to the top four yep. and all the glory that comes with the, the next stage of the playoffs. Now, there, Takeda actually has an answer for this, but they're all in a side deck. Yes, I'm going to guess there's some kaijus in there. There's a couple. There's a couple. <laughs> a couple kaijus. But there's also the Monarch Stormforth, which I've been seeing a lot of that in the main deck, but he's got it in his side deck, and it can definitely come in here as a way to get past that indestructible dragon. Uh, conversely, on the Fauna side, he has uh, free Mask of Restrict. Yeah, that's, uh, that's a pretty good one. Uh, we've got some Time Lords. Lancia is probably not going to be coming in here. Mm, uh, I mean, he could. Well, oh, no, that's on his side. Never mind. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, could, no, he does not going to really use against Masterpiece, I don't think. Doesn't seem too likely. It's just, this is one of those cases where you have a couple token cards against the deck that are there because they work against other decks, and they just happen to have the application here. Like the Kaijus, for example, probably not bringing them for this, but they're really good here because this is kind of a one-trick pony deck. There's not really a whole lot it does. That's the whole point of having Alistair's. It gives you something else to do. Yeah. Uh, it's just a case of, like, that's one of the problems with uh, competitive play when you decide to play one of these outsider decks where you're going to get caught in the crossfire by mm -hmm. commonly sided cards that also just impact your deck. There's some situations you just can't avoid that because these cards are so open-ended. For example, Kaijus are good against any monster. That yeah, any, any one single big monster can be fed to a Kaiju. Like, and there's, there's nothing you can really do about that. So choosing maybe not to play something because Kaijus exist mm. is kind of a tough sell. But um, That's why I think like Ryan Yu and Charlie Futch have succeeded so much in this tournament. Oh, he's, still, he's still going, yeah, right? Well, they play each other in the top four tomorrow in a rematch of the North American Dragon Duel final. It's just... Like, part of the reason they're there is because the cards that are good against their decks aren't the cards that are good against the rest of them. Yeah, I mean, I was actually shocked to see how well the ABC deck has been doing. And it actually shows that while the players uh, for the OAGES bracket have decided that this is a two-deck format, there's, there was actually holes in this being exploited by both Charlie and Ryan, mm -hmm. uh, which actually took them through. So perhaps there was something the uh, all ages could have learned from the Dragon Duel list. Yeah, like Decode Talker on its own brings a lot to the ABC deck that it it just wouldn't have otherwise under this rule set. It gives you a way to get all of its triggers at once, put all the ABC pieces in the graveyard without locking up the extra monster zone. Yeah, and that just gives you something every other competitor is ignoring, which is additional extra deck monsters. That's right. I don't think we mentioned who else was in the top eight for you guys, and I'm sure know. you're all sat at home on the edge of your seat uh, sweating to hear about this, so we'll quickly run through the list. Uh, we have from Mexico, uh, Pedro. Uh, he is going up against uh, Chuashe... Fane Milton uh, from Singapore. Uh, going into the next bracket, uh, Marcello Barberi uh, from Italy is going to be going up, against, going up against reigning world champion and four-time consecutive player, Sansuke Hiyama, who's made it into the top eight again. Uh, going a bit further down, we have Ryosuke Sujimura. Uh, he's going up against USA's Roland Fang. 
the sole representative from the United States and also the sole United States player that brought the dinosaur deck. One of these two things are related. Hmm. <laughs> but then saying that, Martello is uh, playing the uh, True Draco deck, and he's made it into the top eight just fine. So. To be fair, though, uh, Furman just missed. Did he? He oh, came in ninth, and if the last match had had a winner between Marcello and his opponent, he would have made it in. He would have made it in. actually. He played Forner in the last round, and they drew. Both ah. made it in, and uh, Furman came in ninth. That totally sucks. It's rough. And on the last part of this bracket, we have uh, Takeda uh, against Michael Forner, which is our match that we're watching here. So we have two Europeans left, one US player, and the rest are OCG players. Mm. But only one from Japan, uh, two, two players from Japan, one from Singapore, and then we have uh, Mexico. And if you're wondering, uh, Milton was the first place player. Three from Japan, sorry. Coming uh, in that. Uh, he won the, he, he cleared the Swiss. Nice. Uh, on the Dragon Jewel side, uh, we have in the top four Eric Topol. Uh, tomorrow he'll be playing Rafael Marino Rick. I think I'm saying that right. I do apologize to every German listener. <laughs> uh, from Brazil, he is. Uh, that's going to be the first match, and then Charlie and Ryan Yu, as we discussed. I'm really looking forward to that one because their decks are so not tuned against each other. Chain burn. <laughs> Chain burn. I'm so happy to ABC. see that. That's I know everyone else hates it, but like, that's going to be an amazing match, I think. I wonder if we'll uh, actually get to feature that one tomorrow. We'll have to wait and see. Okay, uh, game two starting out. And Michael looks like he's taking the first turn. Takeda actually gives the first turn over to Michael. That's uh, That's unexpected, right? And it looks like we have news from one of our top eight matches. And uh, this is a bit of unfortunate news, however. Our reigning world champion had an upgraded penalty. Oh, really? And was eliminated from the tournament as a result. So uh, Marcello Barberi is moving on to the top four. He just goes gets a ticket straight into the top four. Straight into the top four. That's it's well, that's the way it goes. Unfortunately, uh, if you if you keep hitting those penalties, they do get upgraded. The judges aren't messing around when they give you a warning. No, and they are... It's not like they're doing this because they're out to get you or anything. They're trying to get you to play better. Like when you get a slow play warning, and they tell you this, like you need to be able to make these decisions in a crisp amount of time, a reasonable amount of time, no matter how complex the situation is. And it's kind of the, it's, it's really one of those things that you take back with you. And you're like, okay, next turn, or next round, even next game, even I'm going to do better. I'm going to be better. Yeah, and it's actually one way that you can think about it uh, when. Sometimes getting a slow play warning when you're thinking for a complex situation is uh, very upsetting. But your opponent is entitled to as much of that clock as you are. And you have to remember that. And if you're taking an excessive amount of it and your opponent doesn't get access to the same amount of clock as you, then there's, there's a problem there. Oh, this is interesting. Yoki Takeda has activated the second effect of Waterfall of Dragon Souls. He's sending Dynamite Knight to the graveyard, and he's going to draw two cards. One for Dynamite Knight and the one that you get just for using that effect. Foreigners got him stuck under the Mask of Restrict. That's going to stop K Takeda uh, going anywhere until he he's able to clear the Mask of Restrict. Yeah, that's down. bad news. Now, he's got plenty of spell and trap removal in his side deck. The question is, did he bring it in? Uh, against the Wind Witch deck, uh, that's difficult because, uh, I mean, the only card he saw in the previous game was Solemn Morning. But if you see Solemn Morning, you assume larger trap lineup. Ooh, Ash Blossom took out that Waterfall. Oh, Okay. I wonder That's if that means vicious. Michael's holding the second uh, Ash Blossom. That's vicious. Well, I mean, it's just a straight up, he just loses his cards. He just loses two cards. Yeah, he sent his monster to great. Yeah, he gets two for one. That's, a, that's a really good hit. Uh, but then uh, Takeda is drawing uh, Pot of Desires. <laughs> so mm -hmm. he's going to be able to recover from that. But Michael's doing a whole lot of nothing over there at the. Well, it's not even his turn, but we're, we're still. He's still got two face round cards. Uh, what kind of traps was he? Can yeah, Michael needs a monster. There's Mask of Restricts, Imperial Order, and Solemn Warning uh, for play for Fauna. But we can assume it's not an Imperial Order if he hasn't flipped it up against that uh, Pot of Desires. Uh, it could be uh, Forbidden Chalices or Cosmic Cyclones as well. There's or set even set rotation. 
set rotation would be kind of interesting here. Can you get your meltdown, I guess, get the meltdown and give your opponent closed forest? I don't know what you would give your opponent in this case. Oh, he picks up Mystical Space Typhoon, though. He did, in fact, correctly side in those Typhoons against Mask Restrict. This could be really bad for Michael. Um, he's Does taking... Does Kate have monsters? Uh, I can actually see. He's still got cards in his hand. Yeah. He's got quite a few, actually. Um, Michael really considering his uh, his play here. Yeah, he's got monsters. What would you respond to that with? What's he got? Flip up the second mask of Restrict? Imperial Order? Yeah, you, yeah, you could. Im but if you had the Imperial Order, surely you'd use it against the Pot of Desires mm. and being able to deny his opponent getting those extra two cards, leaving his opponent on two-card hand. Activate the Twin Twister, discarding what? This could be tricky. If he hits the uh, second Twin Sorry, Twister. Twin Twister. And there's the Imperial Order. And he's just actually thrown at the second Twin Twister as well. And oh, Cosmic Cyclone. Okay. Yeah, he uses that on the Order. And take oh, no, skill drain. on Skill Oh, he tributes Skill Drain. Okay. That must be what's happening. No, the uh, Imperial Order gets oh, uh, yeah, played, right. and then Cosmic takes out the Imperial, then Twin Twister takes out the Skill Drain. Yeah, I still got that image in my mind from the very first match of the day when Furman was Twin Twistering his own card. <laughs> I heard that worked out pretty well for him. It was it was great. It was fun to watch. Michael, uh, free uh, going up to three cards in his hand, he has thrown quite a lot into uh, this match already. He just needs his monsters. That's kind of a similar thing with both of these decks, is that they're very low monster count decks. Zombie World. Oh, that's just as good as Mask Restrict in this uh, particular matchup. Zombie World, because all of the True Dracos are not zombies while in the hand, can't be tributed sum tribute summoned. Giant roadblock for another giant roadblock for Takeda to get through before he can start playing. And one set card, perhaps. Is that card of demise? Mm -hmm. And he already had card of demise, but he just picked up Pot of Duality. Okay, Pot of Duality is very good here. Um, he also has Masterpiece in his hand. Oh, oh there's a Mystical Space oh, Typhoon. MST, we'll see how long Zombie World lasts. Uh, do you, t oh, you have to take the MST here because you can't play without it. Um, but Pot of Desires must be pretty tempting as well, right? When I you can run it, it must be tempting. <laughs> well, that's the whole point of the card, isn't it? Yeah, come on, I'll give you some cards. It's going to cost you some cards. Mm -hmm. but no, I don't have a crazy face on my back on the back of my head. That's not a thing. If you take the Pot of Desires and then you shuffle the Mystical Space Typhoon back in, there's every chance you end up banishing it. Yeah, if you do that, you just feel sad. Yeah, and like he has, lose. he has to take the card that then lets him actually play. Uh, but there's a question on whether uh, Takeda actually even has any more tribute fodder um, so he can actually get the deploy his dino... Uh, Dynamite Knight that he uh, has in his hand. Because the card of Demise isn't going to do anything as long as he, uh, as long as he's holding those two True Draco monsters. Is one of them Masterpiece? One of them is Masterpiece. Yeah, Masterpiece, uh, Dynamite Knight, and another spell card. All right, so I guess it's True Draco uh, Phoenix. Oh, it's, uh, he's got he's got three cards in hand, right? Card of Demise yeah. and two monsters. Yeah, card of Demise. Card of Demise. Sorry, I don't know why suddenly. Ooh, and the last card was not a continuous. So Forner knows that now. The monsters are clogging a little bit for Takeda. And they're not showing up at all for Forner. Think they could work out a deal here, maybe <laughs> swap a monster for a continuous card? Uh, that's not allowed, is it? No, no, that's very much <laughs> not allowed. <laughs> uh, but then it's Forner... It's not unprecedented, though. We've had people exchange their entire decks. Oh, accidentally. <laughs> accidentally. <laughs> there we go. Now Takeda's now he's set. Um, this is g he's going to be able to ride this side pretty hard. Tax directly and connects. Yeah. Now uh, Michael has to commit something as soon as he's able to, which is then going to get the uh, True King Return or True uh, True Draco Apocalypse, and then that. The tribute effect can be played in his opponent's turn to summon the masterpiece, taking out his monster, and then masterpiece taking out additional cards. So Michael is in a uh, terrible position now that uh, Takeda was able to answer both Mask of Restrict and Zombie World. Yeah, and he only put in two Mystical Space Typhoons, and he got them both. 
<laughs> Sometimes them the brakes, mm -hmm. I hear from Joey Wheeler. Foreigner's up. Yeah, I don't think uh, Foreigner, he, he was looking for a monster for so long. Like, had he got it earlier, he could have probably made something go. I think he's just in a really bad place here. Hmm. Well, if he could get to the Crystal Wing and block the Tribute Summon, that would be ideal. But he comes up with Zaphion. Zaphion's not bad. Zaphion, a uh, Time Lord. Uh, we haven't seen much of that in the WCQ season. Uh, just, uh, I guess you've already talked about this today, right? Mm, a little. The interesting thing here, though, is because of the quick effect nature of the True Dracos, in the end phase, or in the at the end of the battle phase, if they wanted to get their free card off of a True Draco, that effect would have to be chained to Zaphion, so it would be on the field and then just go straight back into the deck. Oh, so they actually get the they get the card stolen from the meager way. Yes, so that's part of why it's just so darn good. Now, where you really get wrecked is if they have Forbidden Chalice. Oh, uh, yeah. Then I your monster just dies and you take a lot of damage. I saw this happen quite a lot to Joshua Smith, uh, getting down, uh, just getting chaliced when he was using his Time Lords. Um, oh, and I see that uh, Takeda also sided in Monarch Stormforth, as expected, and he just drew it. Could go out uh, with the Masterpiece, but mm -hmm. he'd be leaving his Masterpiece with only one immunity. Sets a card. And it's immediately hit with Cosmic Cyclone. Oh, he set Monarch Stormforth and lost it. Interesting. Oh, that's not Masterpiece in his hand. It's a Kaiju. Oh, is it Kaiju? It is a Kaiju this whole time. Oh. No, never mind. That's a radically different hand that is not anywhere near as good. And he, can't, he doesn't want a Kaiju Zaphion because she'll let Forner draw a card. <laughs> it's about the only way it gets sent to the graveyard. That or Link Summons. True Draco Apocalypse being set, and yep, we're going to see another Dynamite Knight. Kate has been really good at finding his monsters. Forner, not so much. Yeah, Forner's just taken too long to actually get started. And Kate is going to get a trap in response to Zaphion shuffling itself back into the deck. Probably True King return right now and start trying to grind your opponent with uh, repeated 2500 attack beat sticks. Has he gotten to all three dynamites again this game? Uh, I can't remember. It's whatever the last monster in his deck is, or in his uh, graveyard is. Zapion goes back, True King's return hits the field. It's a pretty solid insurance policy. Should Michael be able to put up some sort of uh, field? And remember, the judges are taking the last shuffles of these decks. Um, you can tell the players aren't used to that, by the way. They quickly throw their decks back into their zone and get ready to play. And the judge is like, hold on, hold on, hold yeah. on. True King's Return, by the way, if you can see it in the on the side of the screen there, the card on that card is so cool. It's a little dark sometimes to see it, but when you actually just get the card image of it, it's just amazing. Oh, I haven't actually taken a look at it. Like, um, there's somewhere you see uh, the True Draco diagram. And I think it's like all the Zodiac monsters getting their power from Masterpiece mm. or giving their power to it. It's uh, they're powering up. They're creating Metaltron 12. Ah, right. That, which is actually being played in this tournament in the Dragon Jewel. Yes. Yeah, it's in the main event as well. A couple of people are playing it. Uh, the idea of it is that if you just keep reviving the True King's Return, it's always bigger than Masterpiece. Yeah, it will get you there eventually. Mm -hmm. And he goes. Oh, he's got Forbidden Chalice. Uses it against the Dynamite Knight. And gets his monster out off of Magical Meltdown. So Alistair gets some invocation, and now we've got a game again. Oh, he has a fire monster, so he can go perk a trio. Yep. Uh, perk a trio starts at, I want to say, 23. It's 24, 24, I think. Uh, and it gains 200 for each card his opponent has. Whatever it is, it's going to be big enough to take everything out. Yeah, then Tricking Returns just starts bringing stuff back. Starts at 23, gets oh, 23 for each, can oh. attack everything once each, and does piercing battle damage. For good measure. 
The other multi-attacking giant dinosaur seems to be doing pretty well, so uh, why not Purgatrio? Purgatrio has actually had, like, every time that Invoked has done well, it's had a lot of help from Purgatrio. Yeah, we I saw that a lot in our in our WCQ, just like, the clutter of monsters being just chucked under it, and then mm -hmm. it just so much damage being, like, like sneaking it in. Yeah, like, Mechaba is obviously really good, and so is Raijin. But I really think that Purgatrio is the the scariest one. Like, there are lots of monsters that negate things. There are lots of things that flip things down. There are not a lot of things that attack everything and never stop attacking and pierce and get huge just because you played cards. Yeah, it basically, it discourages you from playing your cards, which you're not going to do uh, in this kind of tournament. You are, of course, you're going to commit your cards to, to play. And actually, by not doing that, you just open yourself up to all the negation of the other cards we talked about just then. certain what's happening at the moment. It may be a translation. Yes, I believe they're getting the translation of invocation. It could be that he wants to uh, chain True King's return to it, if that last card in the graveyard is indeed a True King. I don't know if that's a particularly good idea, putting a defense monster out there. Uh, yeah, and he also then gives up his uh, tricking return effect, which he could be using during Michael's end phase, um, to prepare him for the following turn after the Purgatrio comes in and just destroys everything, or runs over the field. All right, well, whatever it is, it looks like we are about decided. All right, we're fusing Alistair, obviously, but with who? Alistair's fused with... Michael taking a little bit long to commit to this fusion summon. Uh, it's a little weird when you get the hang-up there on the... Uh, oh, no, it looks like he took out Ash Blossom. I didn't oh, see he's, already he's already done it? Okay. Yeah, I did not see her in the graveyard. Kind of find his Purgatrio. He plays. Does he play two? Uh, Invoked Purgatrio, two copies. I don't know. He's. Uh ah, uh, there's been a three minute time extension issued to the main event. I've just okay. been notified of for that translation. Like issue for the translation. Yes. So there's Purgatrio. Here we go. And it goes in the extra monster zone. Yep, that, uh, <laughs> that's an old habit right there. Mm -hmm. That's just one of those weird things that it's going to take a little while for current players to adapt to. But new players, they'll get it instantly because there's nothing to unlearn. And we're getting a final cut there from a judge. And soon after, I think Purgatrio will take his rightful place in the center of the table. That's a 2700, or sorry, a 2900 right now because of True King's Return. So it's going to be able to take out both dynamites. Actually, no, one dynamite has 29 I got it. because yeah. of the Forbidden Chalice. So he attacks that one first, and he's got Alistair back in his hand so he can discard it for the attack pump. I don't know if that's a smart play, though, to use the Alistair attack pump, right? Two, four, six, so... It goes against the smaller one first. Okay, so that wasn't an attack on Dynamite. That was, oh, I need to move Purgatory to the, the extra monster zone. Right. It can be sometimes difficult to tell what's going on without any words, and that's... Like, it's a challenge for broadcasting, but it's more of a challenge if you're playing in the World Championship and you don't really know if your words are going to reach the other person who might be from a completely different continent. As you <laughs> yeah, it's like a serious and Cory Wakado Nandisco. And you're just, you're like, I, I don't even understand the answer. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's true. like I could ask, what does your card do? But I don't know what it means. The answer is. I mean, we get this in European events actually quite a lot, uh, where you get all the different uh, countries coming together. That's why we have such a large number of judges at European events mm -hmm. uh, handling translations. They've gotten very uh, they've gotten very efficient at it. Alright, so let's see what Takeda gets. If he gets a trap, 
Oh, he thought twice about setting that card. He was going to do it, and then he didn't. Purgatrio at 2,700. Yeah, Alistair can pick up the invocation. But then, yeah. Yeah, he can't summon anything. Is he playing li Link Monsters? He's going to have a decode talker? Uh, checking, checking, checking. No, no uh, decode talker. Yeah, it doesn't seem like a deck that was going to use it. Swings in, takes 200. And Horner's going to have a chance to turn the corner on this one. And the real question is, where is Masterpiece? It's only five minutes left in play. Michael's yeah. up one game. The problem for him is that Takeda could win this one due to not being able to just do enough damage in time. Sets a monster. Hmm, what could that be? Is it the... No. Like, I can't see him setting the Ghost Ogre and Snow Rabbit. If he had it, I can't see him setting any of the... Wait, maybe the Wind Witch. Oh, I wonder if Takeda remember. will remember to switch his monster to attack mode. He has to, right? Yeah, if he forgets that Perk True has piercing, mm -hmm. that is a big problem. There we go. Ooh, that's the second time. Of demise. There, there it is, is, in attack position. Presumably he would attack. What could it be? Alistair, most likely? It's Alistair. Oh, it searches when it's flipped face up as well. You know what, I don't see that often. I forgot he did that. Yeah, when it's flipped face up or normal summoned. Uh, and he didn't want to stick it in attack mode and risk just losing more life points because he's not going to give. He doesn't want to give up his broken trio. Right. Yeah, it's pretty smart. And they're going to need to hurry up on this uh, shuffling. Although I do believe they've gotten. You said they had a time extension for yeah, three minutes. Yeah, they got a. They have a three-minute time extension from the earlier uh, translation request. All right. So when time runs out, we will let you know when the stoppage time begins. Maybe go for a little more of it right now with all this shuffling going on. All right, so we're still in Takeda's turn. He ends, and Forner's up. Uh, we know there's an invocation in Michael's hand. We don't know the other two cards. Now he's not been committing them to the spell trap zone, so mm -hmm. we can assume they're not trap cards. So they're either hand traps or... It wouldn't be Wonder Wand, because he would have been able to use that with his Alistair, and he wouldn't have said it. He would have summoned it. He used it. So... Three minutes left. Does he play Invoked uh, Elysium? Invoked uh, yeah, Elysium. Let me check. Let me check. Let me check. Let me check. Probably not. No, no, he does not. Okay, this is just something I was thinking about right now. Three minutes left in the round, and we've got a little more stoppage. If Takeda can pick up True Draco Apocalypse, he'll be in pretty good shape. Yeah, he can then start actually just uh, lowering his opponent's monsters. But the, t the clock is getting dangerously low. Mm -hmm. The combo is pretty good. Return to bring back your monster. Apocalypse to shrink everything else. And he is indeed attacking. Yeah, this uh, tricking return is creating quite the tar pit um, for Michael to crawl through. He's just going to keep uh, pulling up uh, Dynamite Knights uh, until uh, Takeda is able to draw into a masterpiece or a card that will let him get it. It's uh, it's strange that the game is slowing down now, like not the not the actual plays themselves, just the pace at which is happening. We seem to be having a lot more interruptions to the flow of the game as time's been dwindling down. True King's return brings back Dynamite Knight, and Kate is up. Ah, okay, a slow play warning was issued, and an additional three minutes were added to the game clock, so we've got six additional minutes to uh, to play out this match. Oh, I see. Do we know who it was for? Uh, unfortunately, I didn't get that information. Okay. 
Disciples of the Dr True Draco Phoenix, putting everything back into the deck to get another draw. Very powerful card when you can keep, uh, if you don't have the True Draco return, just keep putting the Masterpiece back so you can get it again when it's limited. It's another one where I really like the art on it. It has the entire crew of the uh, smaller Dracos. Ten seconds left in the main match, but we'll have six minutes of time added on. Time in the round. Once again, it's time in the round. Top eight participants, please start your three-turn end of match. Unless you have a time extension, judges, please help players with end of match. All right. We're going to go six more minutes before we go to that three-turn end of match procedure. I've entered the dangerous world of negative time. <laughs> you don't want to stay in negative time for too long, so that's why it's important to finish your match in an orderly manner. Yeah, actually, uh, something you guys uh, can, can work on at, at home is uh, when you get to end a match procedure, please don't just suddenly assume you have infinite time. Uh, because you, you, you can still be issued slow play warnings in after time. Um, and it actually starts call, uh, delaying future rounds on the event if you just go, okay, our well, time's gone now, so I can spend 10 minutes thinking about this move. It doesn't really matter. Um, all right, so we have our first result from the top eight of the All Ages event. And Ryosuke Sujimura has defeated Roland Fang. So the United States has been eliminated from the All Ages event. And they still have a representative in the Dragon Duel. Uh, uh, you've got two. Do we? Uh, well, you've got uh, Canada. Yeah, we got Canada. <laughs> that counts. We are we are on the same continent. We share a <laughs> WCQ. I see how you're very politically uh, dancing around. That. I, I'm not sure that they would want to be called America. No, USA. no, that's fair. I don't think that'd be the case. I got that impression from uh, Rimini a while ago as well. Mm. I'm I'm really looking forward to that rematch though, Charlie and Ryan. You, that'd be. I actually think Ryan's. Oh man, that's Ryan's deck is way better for this matchup, uh, this cheesy burn deck that no one's prepared for at all. I think it is as well, but there's every chance that he can you know give his opponent some Ojamas and they can turn into Link Spiders. Oh yeah, that's 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 very true. Um, is he? I can't even remember if uh, Charlie was playing Link Spiders. Actually, I know. I think he might have taken it out. I remember seeing it on maybe his initial list but I don't believe it made the final. Chain Pern, particularly strong in a tournament where Fairy Tail Snow is just not present at all. Mm. A card is the one that always catches a... Um, I find it catches a lot of Chain Pern players out when they can just suddenly start shrinking their resources from their hand in the field. So they're taking significantly less damage from your cards and then you don't actually have enough to get them. Mm. And Kate has picked up... Uh, Duality, and it looks like he's revealed a true Draco Apocalypse there. It's going to be very handy. And indeed, he does take it. And I'll go for yet another shuffle as we go further and further into negative time. Strange things happen once you get into negative time. I... I, I, I almost want to ask, like, what, but um, I feel like we've done this so many times, I wouldn't be surprised by your answer. Mm. So is the question worth asking? The world may never know. <laughs> Skater switches his Dynamite Knight back to attack position. He's still going to take damage, but the chip damage is nothing compared to what he would take from the piercing damage. I mean, and he does have the Apocalypse now. Yeah, if he uses the Apocalypse to lower the attack of Purgatrio, um, and then he's got the, he can bring it back. He can, Actually, he can just straight up destroy Purgatrio by uh, targeting it his own tricking for turn. Right, I see. Or he could target the uh, Disciples and just shrink it so that it runs into... Uh, Dynamite Knight harmlessly, because Alistair's not in his hand anymore unless he's picked up another. In fact, I don't even know what Michael Forner's been drawing, because he hasn't been putting anything on the field. Do you think maybe he's getting all of his Wind Witches now, and he just can't use them because he has a monster? Potentially. Um, seems like the likely scenario. 
Uh, he's either picking up wind witches or he's picking up hand traps. He's certainly not picking up any uh, real traps. Otherwise, he would have been setting those out. So it's uh, plus 1,000, which makes it 33, and then gets halved down to 1750. And he's destroying his dynamite knight. So he targets his own monster, destroys it, halves Purgatrio. Oh, and I guess the question is, uh, is it does it lose the 200 before the halving happens? Technically, these things are simultaneous. Right, okay. But physically speaking, you destroy the monster first and then have. And... Uh True King Apocalypse makes the attack become half, uh, but become more half whatever the current value is, or does it just half the current attack? I will let you know in just a moment. The attack and defense of all face-up monsters your opponent controls become half the current attack and defense. So, in this case, if he loses the attack first, goes to 3100, it'll be frozen at 1550 instead of 1750. And I say frozen because it's a becomes effect. That stops further modifications from Purgatrio's ability. That's part of why Apocalypse is so powerful against this particular monster. So just for everybody watching at home, you can target one other true Draco or true King card you control, destroy it, and if you do, the attack and defense of all face of monster you control become half. So you have to do the first thing, destroy it, to do the second thing, have the attack and defense. Right, yeah. So you do so A, then yeah. you see if that's happened, then do B. And then dynamite's back in defense. That's one more card. And it looks like that extension is getting pretty thin, unless there is another one added on for that last judge call, but I don't believe there was. No, we're beyond seven minutes now, so we should be moving into end of match procedure, which in this particular situation very heavily favors Takeda, um, which would then push us into a, a game-free elimination. And it'll only be it'll be short too. It'll be a three-turner. All right, so time is called here. Takeda's on turn zero. We'll do three more turns after this, which means Michael Forner will get the last chance to attack. And it seems likely to me that we're going to the extra game, which we played using only four turns total. Which heavily benef uh, favors Takeda, right? With all the True King spell and traps able to clear up uh, monsters just to randomly whilst you're playing your cards anyway? In any other situation, I would say yes. But in this case, Michael Forner can put an indestructible monster on the field that and comes with burn damage. That's very true. Uh, putting the burn damage down and then having a monster your opponent can interact with without actually using a counter trap to pay life is going to be enough to seal the deal. Yes, but he's got to draw it. That's true. And we're still getting even more Purgatrio math. The good thing about Purgatrio is that normally you don't have to do all this math because you play it and then you win because you played it. And yeah. it just attacked everything and did tons and tons of damage. Oh, you had five guys in defense mode? That seems like a you problem. Hmm. Maybe you shouldn't have uh maybe you shouldn't have opened the zoo. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost like when you when you do that you can't even you can't even no, you, bad you, about you it, can't can be you? mad if you put a bunch of zero defense monsters in defense position against somebody playing Alistair. That could have perhaps been an error. A, a little lapse in judgment, mm -hmm. as it were. Okay, despite the situation, a play needs to be made here. 
Mm -hmm. And it looks like he's not attacking. He doesn't want to risk Alistair, I guess. I wonder what that last card is. Have we seen that last card? In Michael's hand. No, oh, in uh, Takeda's field. No, we haven't. Time. It's been there for uh, it's been there for a while. We haven't uh, haven't seen it yet. Invocations activated. He's going to get rid of that one Purgatrio to get something a little more uh, useful. And now we got another question about magical meltdown and what he is or is not allowed to chain to. Looks like that is. Uh, he didn't manage to break a tree. Oh no! Of course he doesn't need to because he's not summoning it from the graveyard. The problem is, but even this new Purgatory falls into the same trap of the uh, Apocalypse and Return uh, Tar Pit. This one's going to start a little bigger, at least, and at least he can try to force him to get rid of something other than the dynamite. This guy attacks. He uses one, two, three, four. Six. He's uh, plus 1,200. He's 35. And it looks like he just takes it. Clarification. Looks like, look like Foreigner was trying to concede. But I don't know what happened to Magical Meltdown otherwise. Yeah, I think he's realizing he's never going to get the damage in. Alright, so we will see a third game here. It will only be four turns total. And I believe they can't side deck. I think that's correct. Um, in this case, I think you very actively want to choose second after two attacking turns, right? Actually, no. If it's you're, it's just because of Foreigner's particular deck that he, he might opens with Ice Bell. There's not a whole lot Takeda can do about it unless he draws Monarch Stormforth or Kaiju. Yep, and then actually, if it has a follow-up to to that, it's a it's a really tough choice. I feel like Foreigner will choose to go first. I feel like that's a, the best case scenario for him. He doesn't need the extra attacking turn because he can do damage from a different source. Right. Uh, but if he if he was limited to only inflicting damage by battle, then he absolutely should consider the second turn where he can get the two battle phases. Mm -hmm. All right, so they're explaining the rules of this right now. It'll be two turns apiece, and after that, we will check the life points. Whoever has more will win. If nobody has more, we will keep going until there is a change in life points. And after the current chain has ended, we'll check it again, and the player with more is the winner. Do they, uh, they have to roll to see who goes first. Six. Oh, that's interesting. I forgot that you randomly decided who goes first when this happens. Well, that throws a wrench in the works. No side decking and a randomization. The winner of the dice roll gets to choose, right? Or is it just assigned? It uh, gets to choose. Let's see what Takeda decides is best for him. It looked like he said, I'm going first, he goes second. That's absolutely fine, Michael. Then, yeah, he's got to play into his opponent's uh, potential back back row cards. But yeah, that's probably he just really needs his opponent to not have a monster. Yeah, pretty unlikely though, considering the how fast uh, Takeda will be able to get through the deck with the pot of desires, pot of uh, dualities. Well, desires, you have to be careful. You might just lose everything. That's true. But if you draw it in your opening hand, here, there's no way you're not playing it anyway. No, you have to. A quick pile shuffle later, and we'll be getting back into the game. I 
So take a quick check of the extra, make, thing ev make sure everything is there and not held into the main deck. Yeah, that's the problem when you play with uh, the same sleeves on both your extra deck and your main deck. Is uh, you, you sometimes do that accidentally, shuffle your crystal wing into your, into your main deck, and you're like, uh, that's a pretty strong card to have in my hand. Mm -hmm. It shouldn't be there. Can I, can I normal summon this? No, I have to tribute? Oh. No, that's, no, whatever. that's not how that works. Hey, there are plenty of good monsters that are level 8 and 2 tributes. Like Masterpiece. Yeah, Masterpiece uh, is incredible. Alright, and the judges are going to have their say with the decks. Corner is ready. And both players coming down to the wire to hang on in this tournament. Remember, one of these guys is uh, is going home after this. Y you know, they get to stay in the venue for the rest of the tournament. We don't put them on a boat and kick them off the island. That would be a bit a bit rough. But essentially, they're going to be out of the tournament, and that's going to be oh, them out of the season, essentially. Harsh, but on brand. Yeah. <laughs> I just feel like the legality of just having henchmen on an island kicking people off aggressively was just not well thought out. If I if I mention such a thing to the legal team, I, I I'd almost expect him to throw a chair at me for even going into his office with such a crazy suggestion. It's because you don't have as much money as Pegasus. <laughs> you just change people's minds anyway. I mean, if you bought your own country, ah, the yeah, laws or whatever you want, diplomatic immunity as well. That's true. And it looks like he had Forner go first. Interesting, and Forner did not pick up his Wind Witch. Mm. He decides to uh, turtle up. And he flips a mask and restrict immediately. Does Takeda have an answer? Takeda's got Solemn Morning and True Draco Apocalypse. Both of those cards blanked under the mask and restrict. Well, you're not going to use Solemn Morning. Card or Demise is activated. Digging for that Mystical Space Tafoon. Oh, there's only one card drawn. Yeah, I figure you let him have that and then... Pot <sighs> of Desires. <laughs> that was just incredible. And if he picks up Mystical Space Typhoon off this, oh, wow. look out. 1, that 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Well, that would be absolutely crazy for Takeda. This is turn. So it's two turns each. Four and one first. So this is Naoki's first of two turns. So yeah, Takeda taking away one of the battle phases from Michael. And he picks up a spell. It's not... The first one wasn't Mystical Space Typhoon. Now, he's got a spell, though, in an Apocalypse, though, so he can get rid of the Mask of Restrict. But he's got to discard his monsters. Mm. Did he also have Return? If he has Return, yeah, that would be a way for him to sneak cards into play. Hmm. Such a tough situation. This is Forner's only turn that he can attack. Yeah, he absolutely has to. Flips and Alistair. And Takeda wasn't able to take his Solemns out, and we saw that, we ha that he uh, had one, did he not? Yeah, he had a Solemn Warning, which he's almost certainly not going to play here. Doesn't seem likely. And once again, checking flipped face up, which was, still works. Invocation. Um, Michael doesn't have any own monst uh, monster's own graveyard, so the only one he has access to. His opponent does. Is Dynamite Knight, and that's the water. Invoked monster. That's, uh, a, that's a great monster to have in the situation. Was it Kokaitis? So at uh, 2,900 or 2,800 defense, really high up there, can't be destroyed by opponent's card effects, and it can attack while in defense mode. Very, very strong in end of end of match procedure. That is a great card to have in this scenario. And even if True King's Return is played, there is two Dynamite Knights in the graveyard, mm -hmm. so the fusion would be successful. Next question is: Do you try to attack with the Alistair? Oh, Wind Witch. God, Ice Bell. Now he's got two lines open to him. He's got Ice Bell. So he's not going to get a Surge. 
but he's going to get 500 damage. He could just make these attacks and then uh, fusion summon the uh, Raiden if he wanted to to try and be disruptive. Mm. Or he goes Kokaitis. Kokaitis just sounds better, right, in this situation if you're leading. Because mm. your opponent, like, has to Kaiju it. That's kind of their only way of dealing with it. And they he can't tribute because of the uh, Mask Restraint. Right. He's got a lot. Takeda has a lot of things that he has to do to get past this. Like, he has to clear out. So he's got returns. So he's going to be able to block. Or do we have a do we have a response here? I think you got to think very hard if you've got that cosmic cyclone. Like a thousand life points is uh, a lot to pay. Mm. Yeah, he wouldn't want to willingly drop himself, I guess. But the uh, that effect is is that a hard once per turn? I believe so for True King return. So I think you play it if you got it. Twin Twister. Okay. That's uh, that's less damaging. He's going to lose one monster and probably doesn't oh care. Oh, no. If he targets two cards, he could hit um, one of the spell cards and lose his Mask Restrict. It's true, but there's a good chance he's going to lose it anyway. And it's better to get more damage in here and then coast it is up so they can't get past it. Yeah, but he could have just chose to destroy the one card uh, with Twin Twister. He didn't have to destroy two, right? He could. I guess you're, gi you're giving it up, but if he... This could backfire, but at the same time... I don't know, that's a, that's a tough deal to give up one free extra destroy, right? Is he thinking of chaining? What's he going to chain? Well, we know the True King Return will destroy one of the monsters. Which oh, an ending nightmare. Unending nightmare. Oh, he pays the thousand for it as well. Well, I mean, it's pay the thousand or definitely don't win. Yeah, well, that, that seems fair. All right. So, yep, further chains? We may have a further chain. Twin Twister. Okay, so it's Return, Twin Twister, Unending Nightmare, a zigzag shape. Well, what's next? Next is Apocalypse to destroy his own. To destroy his own uh, True Draco, or True King's Return. And it's not a, not a tribute effect. It's a destroy effect. And that will half the attack of Michael's monsters. Yep. And one of them will also get destroyed when True King's Return is gone. Yeah, the thing that's really hurting to Katie here is that he lost so many monsters. Yeah, he had to throw them out to his own card of the mice. All right, so he's at 6,500, facing down two 500s. Neither of those are good to destroy, really. I, I don't think it's, it makes a difference, because uh, Michael's going to probably use it as a fusion. Now, there's definitely a correct choice there, and it is Alistair. Yeah, I guess, because if he fuses with the Alistair, he takes away a potential attack target. He, it's gonna right. It forces his uh, forces Michael's line of play into fusing into Raijin if so. uh, he wants to remove the liability. Instead of Kostas. That's exactly correct. He's got two monsters down there. We know he has... Which Solemn was it? Warning? Solemn Warning. He can't play that. There's, there's no way he can play that. That would be brave <laughs> to flip that up at this stage. But what's the other card? Was it a spell? I think it's True Draco Phoenix Formation. Is it Phoenix Formation? Or Disciples of the True Draco Phoenix. Where did I get Phoenix Formation from? Harpy Lady? You were thinking about LC4 earlier, so I think a little yeah, that might have seeped through. I don't, I don't even... Sorry, guys. Uh, what Jerome said, that's the card that I think is face down. Well, I think it's a pretty much foregone conclusion that Foreigner's going to play Invocation here and get back a Alistair. But first he's going to get the text... Mm. 
Well, we're in agreement that Takeda was made the correct play by destroying Alistair, but it's a bit of a tougher decision for Foreigner on which monster to play. I think you just get the... You kind of have to get the Kokaitis, right? Yeah. I, I mean, your opponent try... Uh, you've got a 500 attack monster, 2,000... Oh, ah, the one tough. question is, what happens if they somehow just top deck Masterpiece? You just lose if you leave that Glass Bell on the field. Yeah. Yeah, you have to get rid of the Glass Bell. So, I th I think it's Raijin. Yeah, you get the Raijin, get the... Um, get the Raijin, uh, put it in defense. Get the Alistair, who can boost defense points as well, right? Yes. And then have the Book of Moon effect to hopefully get you there. Yeah, so I think it's right. I think Raijin's play. No, he goes for Kokaitis. Mmm. Mmm. So one of the reasons you get Raijin is because there is no way with this field, unless Takeda just pulls off a miraculous series of drawing into draw cards that he can get past, or that he can do the damage needed. Or rather, uh, so that he can get the monster effect immunity on the Masterpiece. Yep. Because right now, I think Takeda has a lot more outs to this than he would to the Raijin. Yeah, but, it, well, first of all, there's the, having the Wind Witch just in attack mode um, is just a giant liability uh, for, for Michael. He's leaving it um, because the Dynamite Knight is like 25 on its own, right? Mm -hmm. So that's that's a 2,000 gap right there. Cleared. Basically, Diagram wins the game. Yeah. The, but depending on what Michael has in his hand, he might have Ghost Ogre or one of the Hand Traps. He's not set any additional cards. That's true. I gotta figure that he wouldn't just throw Cosidus out there if he didn't. If he didn't. Yeah, he must have considered. Uh, he must have considered the situation. He gotta have something. Uh, and there's a handshake. But he doesn't. Michael Forner is going to be progressing into the top four of the World Championship 2017, and that actually um, only leaves uh, Sujimura from Japan mm -hmm. left in the tournament, and. Both Marcello and Michael Forner, two Italian players, also making it into the top four. I believe they just played each other last round, but they won't be playing each other this time. Not until the finals. And our last player, yeah. Well, we've got Michael Forner, Marcello Barberi, and it was... I don't remember who the winner was for the uh, Mexico versus Singapore. Uh, Milton. Milton was the winner. Milton was the winner, okay. And uh, Ryosuke Sujimura. So those are going to be our semifinal matchups tomorrow. That's, uh, well, once again, that's Milton of Singapore. We'll take on Barberi of Italy. And then we'll have Sujimura of Japan taking on Foreigner of Italy tomorrow. And then on the Dragon Duel side, we have Eric Toppel versus Raphael Reich. And then Charlie Futch versus Ryan Yu. And uh, do we have information on Duel Links? I actually don't know who we're going to be featuring tomorrow for Duel Links, but we will have Duel Links features again mm. tomorrow. Okay. So that match was... Uh, it got really weird. Like, the first game was really straightforward. This yeah. deck did what it was supposed to do. Very textbook. And did the thing that gives it the advantage, the whole reason that he played it in this tournament. But game two, it started out, it looked very certain, and then it just started getting dragged down into the mud. And that's what True King's Return really does for you. It's just... A constant, constant stream of monsters. It never, ever stops. And that's that's why people were playing Metaltron 12. It's just to have it be that monster. A giant wall with uh, 3,000 defense points will generally uh, hold your opponent off for you to switch your guy mm -hmm. back into attack and then start progressing over your opponent. But yeah, you, you, with true Dracos, if you're not winning, you just drag your opponent for a tar pit, and sooner or later you're going to get yourself into a position where you can actually get back into the game. Yeah, you'll hit your demise into desires into whatever you need. That's your nitro boost. It's just so hard to get at them if they have True King's Return, and that makes it kind of the number one target for a lot of your removal cards. Actually, interestingly, I know Marcello's playing uh, the True Draco Demise. Yeah. Michael Forner is playing uh, Invoked. Mm -hmm. I can't remember what Ryusuke Sujimura was playing. I think it's highly, highly likely that it's Dinosaur Yang Zings. Is it the two Dinosaur Yang Zings? I was wondering if uh, we got into the top four without any of the Dinosaur Yang Zings. Left. No, uh, Sujimura is in fact playing Dinosaur Yang Zing. And what was the other one, Milton? Uh, yes. Uh, Chua Shane Feng Milton. No, I haven't heard much from Milton. He very sneakily got in here and uh, did a lot of damage. And it looks like he is indeed playing Dinosaur Yang Zing as well. Okay, so we've got a... Pretty good mix, actually, for the top four. Mm -hmm. uh, 
And the one outsider deck making it into the top four. Yeah, I mean, there were only three decks in the tournament, and there are still three decks in the tournament. So I think that's a success, Pretty especially for Michael Forder, who's <laughs> the third deck. Yeah, especially when all the players made the decision, this is a two-deck format, mm -hmm. and then it's, it's getting exploited by Michael, Charlie, and Ryan. Yeah, it was really wild over there in Dragon Duel. I think they might have four different decks. Do we know what um, Eric is playing? Uh, I can have a look. Let's see. Yeah, Hike is playing. Or uh, Reich is playing. Invoked the uh, Invoked True Draco deck, and then we have ABC with Fudge and Chainburn with Ryan Yu. But help if I was looking Tepel. at the Dragon Duel oh, deck Tepel. lists. I was looking at the main event deck list and wondering why I couldn't find Eric. Tapel is playing uh, True Draco, so there's no dinos on this side. All the dinosaurs are gone. Oh, well, Tapel went extinct. Years ago. <laughs> Where have you been? I thought they were just a test of, uh, you know, a test of us. <laughs> That's why the what the bones were for. Well, they Topel is playing the Metaltron 12, so we might get to see that tomorrow. That'll be well. cool. But to see any more of the 2017 World Championship, you will have to tune in tomorrow because that's going to do it for us today. All the games are done for now. There's only semifinals left tomorrow. So uh, from myself, from Matt, and from Michael, and Robbie, he's here too. He's been helping us out, feeding us information from the table. Uh, we thank you for joining us today, and have a good day. We'll see you again tomorrow.